You're watching us from Rwanda's capital in Kigali, and good evening once again, and very warm welcome to RTV News with me, Ethan Tashabia. For the first time in history, Rwanda has a cardinal. The Catholic Archbishop of Kigali, Antoine Kambanda, was today ordained in a ceremony held in the Vatican, officiated by Paul, Pope, Paul, rather Pope Francis. In a ceremony held in Rome, Italy, at the global headquarters of the Roman Catholic Church, 13 new cardinals were ordained, including Rwanda's Antoine Kambanda, who is also the Archbishop of Kigali. The ordination ceremony was characterized by religious prayers, with cardinals later offered symbols of their new reigns, which included a red heart, a scarlet beretta. Archbishops are characterized by purple hearts and dresses, but the cardinals have red coverings, which represent sacrifice and readiness to shed blood for the sake of the church. New cardinals are assigned a church in Rome, which they assist from afar, and which bears one's coat of arms. According to the members of the Roman Catholic Church in Rwanda, this is a new challenge to the local church. Cardinal Kambanda is credited for his role in Rwanda's pursuit of unity and reconciliation following the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi, which is very important. Our country experienced dark history, but we thank God for he has continued to give Rwandans grace to change for good and live as one. We need to make good use of these blessings. This shows that God is with us. Back in time, we used to think that cardinals are supposed to be only whites, but that is not the case. We'll continue to pray hard and draw closer to God. Father Jean Bosco Nagunjira says that for Rwanda to get a cardinal, despite the country's dark past, is a significant milestone. One would start by asking themselves if Rwanda deserves to have a cardinal. After going through a lot, including the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi, the black spot on the chart for its role in the genocide and, and all that, but when you follow closely, you realize that Rwanda has made commendable strides. We thank the church and the government for the steps taken to overcome the hell of a genocide, which surprised many international observers. The next step is to promote unity and reconciliation as Rwandans. Ambanda, aged 62, becomes a cardinal slightly over 30 years after he was first ordained as a priest by Pope John Paul II on September 8, 1990, when the Pope visited Rwanda then. This has come about 120 years after the first Catholic church was built in Rwanda in Save, Thousand Province. Cardinal Kambanda was ordained as the Archbishop of Kigali on October 19, 2018. Congratulations to Cardinal Antoine Kambanda. Now to tell us more, I'm joined by Archbishop of the Anglican Church, Dr. Laurent Banda, who is also the chairperson of the Interreligious Council of Rwanda. Archbishop, many thanks for joining us. Good evening. Uh, yes, good evening, sir. Yeah, I understand it's, um, it's, a, it's a, a big uh, story for the religious, um, uh, for the religion in Rwanda. But uh, would you please tell us what this means for the church in Rwanda as well? Well, thank you very much. First of all, I should say I'm a vice chair of uh, RIG, Rwanda Interfaith Council, not uh, the chairman. German is uh, Philippe Rukamba, mm. but this is uh, this is a great day for Rwanda. This is a special day. It is unique. It is the very first cardinal for Rwanda. So it is a joy for all religious groups in Rwanda. It's just not for the Catholics, it's for the country, and uh, it is for all religious groups. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kambanda is, is, a, is a wonderful, wonderful man. He's highly rational and uh, a godly man, uh, committed, and uh, I think he's uh, also committed to the country. So let me say that he's, 
there's a significant milestone, not only for Rwanda, but for the region as a whole. Mm. Um, would you tell us what is the relationship uh, like of the Catholic Church and other dominions in this country? Well, the Catholic Church and other religious groups uh, have a wonderful relationship. We are into an ecumenical relationship. That is why we talk about the Rwanda Interfaith Council. Our chairman is Philip Rukamba, who is a bishop of uh, Butane. And we have seen uh, 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 an extension of love reaching out of the Catholic Church to other religious groups. And so we do have a good relationship in this country. And we applaud and appreciate the leadership of the Catholic Church in Rwanda and the relationship that we enjoy with all the bishops of the Catholic Church and more so the now Cardinal Antoine Kambanda. Hmm. Is there any message you have for him? This is the right time, I guess. <laughs> well, uh, his name is Kambanda. I'm Banda, so it is a joy to say congratulations to Archbishop, to, to, to the uh, Cardinal uh, uh, Kambanda, Antoine. I pray that uh, it will be a blessing to us all, to Rwandans, and to the unity of the religious groups in the country, therefore emphasizing more on ecumenical relationship and bringing everybody together. Archbishop Dr. Rolamba Namena, thanks for your time. We appreciate you. Thank you very much. That is Dr. Laura Mbanda, who is the Archbishop of the Anglican Church here in Rwanda, speaking about the ordination of Cardinal Antoine Kambanda, uh, who becomes the first Cardinal from on the Rwandan history. Moving on, in celebration of the 39th anniversary of the apparitions of the Blessed Virgin Mary on Saturday, November 28, 2020, in Chibeho, in the northern region, Roman Catholics say this day helps them ever read themselves on the progress of the message of the prayers given to them by the Blessed Virgin Mary, as well as living in harmony with each other, which encourages them to work on purifying their hearts, as well as draw closer to God and the Virgin, uh, rather, the Blessed Virgin Mary. During Mass that was offered to celebrate the 39th anniversary of the apparition of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all Catholics attended from the Temple of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Different from the past year's celebrations where Christians from all walks of life would convene to celebrate this day. This was done in a bid to avoid the further spread of the coronavirus pandemic. Some Catholics who had come to celebrate the apparition of the Blessed Virgin Mary say that although the celebrations look a little different this year, it doesn't deter them from remembering the message Mother Mary passed on to them, which encourages them to draw closer to God and to the Blessed Virgin Mary as well. When we come from wherever we are, like the Blessed Virgin Mary did when she came from heaven and gave a message to her children, it also signifies something for me when I also come here because it reminds me of the crucial message she gave us of diligently praying and encourage others and match our prayers with good actions. Today is a special day as we remember the message the Blessed Virgin Mary gave to us and to reflect in our hearts and see if we have put this message into action. Bishop Celestine Hachizimana of Jikongoro Diocese says fellowship and prayer in these unprecedented times should go hand in hand with harmonizing Christian understanding with the prevention of the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. We have to listen to the authorities and respect the guidelines that benefit all of us. That's why Christians too should be respectful of these as we fight the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. The first apparition in Chibeho took place in 1981. More than 40,000 Christians used to congregate here in Chibeho, but this year not more than 1,000 to avoid overcrowding in an effort to prevent the further spread of the coronavirus pandemic. 
Thank you for that report. Now, moving on, gyms and swimming pools, sports services providers and those that used to do these sports have appreciated the resumption of these activities that were closed in order to fight the spread of COVID-19. They have said that they will abide with the guidelines to fight this pandemic. Giseline Muguaneza has the details. In Kigali City, swimming pools and gyms have got signs that show that they're closed. These sport activities got closed in March this year in order to fight the spread of COVID-19. The sport service providers have said that the closing of these activities have negatively affected them a lot. I guess you know that people that come for a sport, either swimming or gym, when they are done, they may take a drink. So you understand that those added services also got affected in one way or another. When these sports services were not yet opened, a thing that is understandable. In order to fight the spread of COVID-19, our clients were having a problem because they were not able to do sports. But we got chances where outdoor sport activities got opened. After that, we asked the Ministry of Sport to visit us and we respected the measures in place to fight COVID-19. Swimming pools and gyms are in some of the activities that got resumed in the cabinet resolutions from the cabinet meeting that was held on 27th November 2020. The gym owners and sport trainers have appreciated this cabinet resolution. They have said that we assume we're doing sports or complying with the measures in place to fight the spread of COVID-19. The effects are that there are many problems we faced in the time we were not working, but we thank the government because of how they kept doing follow-up, as well as giving us guidelines, and we thank them for they have resumed these sport activities as we fight this pandemic. The resumption of sport activities will positively affect tourism in Rwanda, as explained by Baraka Wiyansing Yumva, the chairperson of Rwanda Hoteliers Association. By Monday next week, the detailed guidelines will be provided, and we are ready because some activities that regard the fulfillment of the preventive measure are already done. The guidelines will not take long, and so on, we shall resume with the sport activities. The cabinet meeting has also decided that live performances and culture shows will also resume gradually upon fulfillment of COVID-19 preventive measures, and the concerned institutions will provide detailed guidelines. Development for all of us who want to lose some weight uh, due to many months that we've spent without going to the gym or working out. Well done, Rizlein Muguaneza, for that report. Moving on, some of the survivors of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi say that the reconciliation dialogue have been a catalyst for their healing and have facilitated reconciliation efforts, which former genocide convicts and their relatives say the talks have enabled them to face uh, the families of those who lost their loved ones and ask, uh, and ask for forgiveness. Rather, Gloria Montesi has more. In Nduba sector in Gasabo district, 38 people have been involved in unity and reconciliation programs for the past 15 weeks. What they have in common is a shared history of what they went through during the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. They say they've healed through the testimonies exchanged during these reconciliation dialogues. <laughs> When I joined these reconciliation dialogues, I realized I had to take a step to be close to the other people who took part in the genocide to help them come back to the Rwandan society and live in harmony. And it was hard at first, but when I joined the reconciliation dialogues, I decided to be close to them. My father is one of the people who committed the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi, but my mother is a genocide survivor. I remember the things I went through, 
but I draw strength to help prepare for my better future. I never think of ethnicity. I see everyone as Rwandan, and I strive for giving myself value, and even today, it's what I teach my children. Reconciliation dialogues conducted by community-based social therapy and NGO are currently in 12 districts. These dialogues started in the districts of Nyabihu, Nyamashoche and Rosizi. Nyamashoche District Vice Mayor in charge of social affairs Mukamana Claudette says five out of 15 sectors in Nyamashoche District need this special program. We worked with the DIDE Foundation in terms of unity and reconciliation between the perpetrators of the genocide and the victims. But because of the COVID-19 pandemic, it didn't extend to the entire district as we had wished. So this project will benefit us as a district and we will even extend it to the remaining sectors. The executive director of the community-based social therapy, Zaramba Lucy, says the reconciliation programs will also reach those in prison so that when they eventually return home, they will be reformed. Even the prisoners will have access to the unity and reconciliation programs so that they will be reformed and live in harmony once they return to the society. Through this program, we'll also have dialogues and testimonies that will spread throughout the country via radio. Most people have come to learn of the dialogues about unity and reconciliation among the youth or the elderly so that we can build a Rwanda that's not divided. The project, which was launched in Nyabihu, Nyamashache and Rusezi districts, will last for two years and will cost 350 million Rwanda francs. Thank you, Gloria, for that report. Some farmers, including vegetables and maize farmers, uh, they have asked Rwanda Agriculture Board to provide pesticides for them because, the fa because of the fact that the existing ones on the market no longer kill pests as much as it used to be before. These farmers have said that they use a lot of pesticides to kill many pests at once. These farmers have also said that uh, using a lot of pesticides consume more money, which has led to losses in their farming projects. RAB officials have said that uh, they have begun research to find pesticides to replace or support the existing ones, for there are some insects that have started to become resistant to the existing pesticides. You know what is making news in sports? Uh, Rwanda has just lost uh, their second game in Af uh, Afro basketball qualifier, but we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk football. Rwandan champions APR have beat Kenya's Gor Mahia 2 1 in the first leg of their preliminary round tie in CAF Champions League qualifiers played at Kigali Regional Stadium. Niozima Olivier Seif gave the host a nutty lead after converting from a close range at, at the ninth minute and visitors equalized before halftime. Fitina Ombarenga's brilliant runs on the right flank gave visitors headache as his close led to an own goal in second half. The return leg of this fixture is scheduled next week in Nairobi, Kenya. On behalf of the entire news team that helped me put this together, many thanks for watching us and for watching Garo TV News in English. I'm Ethan Tashobia. Stay well and stay safe. Bye, until next time.